97.9 of Box, this is DJ Eric, one part of the Big Throw and Eric Show. Right now you're tuned in to T with Monroe. Ooh. Sex, love, scandal, harassment. Oh, you get the tea right now. T with Monroe Podcast. You're officially tuned in. All right, so this is Monroe Bishop with T with Monroe Podcast, and I would like to welcome a few guests. Uh, first of all, I just want to say these two ladies here are two of my favorite podcasters. If I have not told you before, because I give y'all shout outs pretty much every week on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So the Shades of Grey podcast, which is hosted by Carmen. Um, you said a co-op of bloggers. Do you have bloggers uh, helping? Yes, I have. Well, I say bloggers because there's two of us at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm also also looking for contributors and you can check out my website if you want to be a contributor. Okay. I definitely do that. So she has a co-op of bloggers and they deliver a staunch um, examination of important issues on the black community through astute savvy interpretation. And I also have Miss Crystal from Crystal Clear. So if you want some soothing podcast <laughs> to help you relax, it's like having therapy with her when she does her podcast. <laughs> Oh <laughs> she's thinking she seeks clarity in life to make the most of her life that's her affirmation it's a very calming podcast and i enjoy it and these two ladies get together every week with the reigning opinion podcast where they give their opinions and spread the word on issues that affect women the culture and their sanity um it's very delightful commentary it's a lot of fun it's a perfect blend of righteousness and ratchetness yes. and i also have mr wayne welcome back wayne Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a content creator, a business consultant with Next Level Consulting, a sports performance trainer with Smash Game Athletics, father, husband, and author. And today he is our all around bougie shit starter. So we're getting ready to get going. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to get straight to the point. Usually I ask everybody how they doing, what's going on, but we don't even care because 23 days ago, 23 days ago, <laughs> exactly, uh, Wayne and I recorded a podcast on uh, what men want. And it caused quite the conversation on SoundCloud. And I thank you ladies for supporting you too, Wayne. So yes. let's just get let's just get down to this. Now this podcast is gonna be it's it's more of what women want, but like I told them, Wayne, before we start recording that because we're gonna be addressing some of the issues that they had with some of your commentary, it should bring all of this together. Okay. Okay. Y'all ready? Oh ready? <laughs> I know. I'm gonna be licking my lips a lot. Not because I think I'm cute, but because my chapstick is upstairs. So that if you see me drinking water and licking my lips in my mouth. Okay, L L Cool J. That's all. <laughs> uh, say that. Okay, so which one of y'all ladies called my panel uh, sexist? Was that you? Oh, that, uh, that that be me. Okay, Pardon. so so what gave what why sexist? What was so sexist about the panel? Because now just, I feel yeah, like I, what I do. No, I felt like Wayne. I'm gonna call <laughs> you out. I just felt like your point of view was extremely archaic, and I felt like. You know, you had this one track mind when it came to a woman's place, what she should be doing, how she should be doing it. And that's just not the world that we live in anymore. Point blank. Period. Period. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the only thing I can say to that is if at any point I gave off that impression, which is strange because in the, the roles in my house, one of the rules I have in life is I don't like to categorize people by gender roles. Like I don't feel like a woman should be a thing because she's a woman, and I don't feel like a man should be a thing because they're a man. So if I did, if if I did give that impression within my dialogue, either I misspoke or something was misunderstood. Because, for example, like my wife works in a prison. Ooh, my I didn't wife, know that. Power lips. My wife is a very like hands-on female as far as like she doesn't I hate to even say this because it's so like and I like the word archaic. I'm definitely gonna take that and put it in my vocabulary for the remainder of the week. But um <laughs> our, our roles, I'm mm -hmm. I'm more of a domestic one. Like I iron, I cook, I I do those things that would stereotypically be attributed to females. 
So there's no, like, that's why, like, when you said it, I was like, I don't think I can feel like that or say that because of the role that I live in on a day-to-day basis. Like, my life is one big gender role switch um, if we're going into that realm. So like I said, either, either I misspoke within the dialogue of everything that was going on or something was misunderstood. So I, I, I that's think, why I kind of, I was confused. I think one of the things that I saw that was mentioned is that you didn't address, uh, what it is required, what is required by men to make a woman want to meet these expectations that you lay forth, um, in our discussion. And I, and so that could be what? my fault because, when I put the podcast together, it was genuinely to talk about specifically what men wanted in terms of relationships out of their women, um, sex and things like that. So maybe that's why the conversation kind of steer, you know, sounded kind of sexist maybe. Well, I no, I think you formatted the show perfectly fine. Uh-huh. I just think that, uh, <laughs> Choose nice words. Um, No, no, shoot from the hip, please. I just feel like sometimes men, and I'm not just going to point out Wayne here, I just feel like sometimes men don't realize when they've slid back into their lizard brain, if that (laughs) makes any type of sense. So you mentioned the reversed gender roles that you have in your home, which is fantastic because I think that everyone should pull their fair share but when you say things like she shouldn't wear that, hmm, that makes me feel some type of way as a woman, mm, you know, mm. shout out to Iyama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because that's just a way for a man to control. Don't do this. Don't do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't act this way. I don't, my brain doesn't work that way. Crystal. What? <laughs> <laughs> You've been so quiet. Come Listen. on, Miss Therapist. Come on, Crystal. <laughs> no, because, you know, throughout the conversation, like, I don't think I necessarily picked up what Carmen picked up. So I, I wouldn't really just be like, well, I didn't feel like he was being controlling. I, I feel like he, Wayne said things that made it sound like he tried to be as supportive as possible like in his role in his marriage like he was really like empowering if anything to his uh partner that's what i got that he was trying to convey but like i said like i i don't know if i you know carmen my ear may be a little bit keener when it comes to <laughs> men you know crossing boundaries and you know going too far so i'm not sure what she heard and what she picked on from him in particular but in general men are not as good as Wayne says he is at home as far as like what role he plays. Most men aren't that good. So uh, in most cases, women are, you know, constantly having to, you know, basically remind men who they are and, you know, requesting that, you know, equality in the relationship. Right. So. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Um, as far as in, in response to what Carmen said, again, this is how I know that there was a misunderstanding because Within that same dialogue, I also said, I'm one of those guys, like, if my wife is getting ready and she's she feels like something is too revealing, I'm like, nah, go ahead and wear that. Like, you have a right to feel yourself. Because, see, like, in this world that we live in, it's like certain, but I, I, and I can't stand this about our, our where we live common day. It almost feels as if certain body type, only certain body types have the right to feel confident in something that might be slightly revealing. And she's a curvier woman. And I'm like, yo, nah, wear that. You know what I'm saying? If you if you if that's how you feeling, and you feeling yourself with it, throw that on, show that off, do what you do. Like I always, <laughs> this is about to sound whack. I'm I'm still gonna say it. <laughs> I always pick like the most revealing outfit possible because I she's come such a long way in in her weight loss journey. I want her to flaunt all of that. Like I'm not at all put off by that. So that's how I know that there was a misunderstanding or a misspeaking or maybe just in the in the in how how freely the dialogue was flowing that's how i could tell if there was a misunderstanding because what you're saying like i don't feel like that on a day-to-day basis like i want her to feel herself like i want her to walk out the house feeling feeling like i i view her not Mm -hmm. how the world says she should view herself because she's not a a stereotypical body type that should be lusted after like nah like if you're feeling yourself and you feel like that's how you feel do it like but um yeah, so I apologize for the mistake. I think that came from the, uh, you know the, the Dana thing, oh, right? 
Oh no, I just think I was thinking about how this conversation came. I think yeah. it was Dana who brought it up, right? Yeah, Dane. Oh. I think the other guest, her okay. husband, had said something about her apparel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I stand corrected. Yes, that's what I think would happen. And she, she, you know, and I felt like Dana was possibly hormonal as well, because like you, you have to consider the hormones you go through, the like right baby. after a baby, right. and like a lot of different things trigger you that wouldn't usually, and so it's like. She, you know, like, I'm going to dress up and look the way I feel like he wants me to look. And then he had a comment. So I feel like there was, like, an internal argument going on within both of them. So they really didn't even have to exchange <laughs> words. They were going through it, you know, internally. Right, right, so right, right. they were both frustrated for whatever reason. So it was like, you can't really place blame on anyone in particular. That's what I got from that, that situation. But, yeah, he did, that guy in that situation in her life, he did, like, kind of make her feel a way about right. what she had on. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but, go ahead. Oh, see, don't get me talking. <laughs> go ahead, girl. <laughs> I'm not do this. So, um, <laughs> um, for him, you did say your wife lost a lot of weight, right? You mentioned it. You implied it, I feel. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So, but you encouraged her before she lost the weight to wear what she wanted to wear, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. For I was sure. Like, I, the thing, here's the thing, like, I was, <laughs> I was an ugly duckling growing up, so I know what it feels feels like to want to be confident but nobody else feels like you should be mm. and so when when you have to when you understand what that feels like on the inside when you know what it feels like to go home and look at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself like why people mess with me like what what is it about me that makes people not want to find me attractive like i understand what that feels like on a day-to-day -day, on like i i still wear it inside like there's still certain scars i wear on the inside because of how I was treated when I was young. So a lot of that kind of has to do with the posture that I carry now. And I'm gonna be honest with you, my mom then told me this, like I have a real like obnoxious twinge in my voice that makes me sound like I'm a know-it-all even when I'm I'm not cheap. Like I, I'm aware of- <laughs> I look, I look, I watch him live on Facebook. Yes, very obnoxious. I'm like, this, this ninja bougie, what is going on? <laughs> Okay. I, and I, I promise you, I, I promise you, it's not intentional. <laughs> it's not. It's like I'm, 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 I'm gonna feel like I'm better than everybody. Mm. Like, that's not my goal. Mm, okay. That's not my goal. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you said that because I will admit that when I listened to the "What Men Want" uh, episode, I was like, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, because if you remember, I also said that that at, we want the same things y'all want. I also remember saying that because I was thinking about that. I'm like, somebody asked me today. They were like, you know, so what? You know, what do men want? I was like, we want the same thing y'all want. Like, we want we want those same feelings. Only if you're a man who's never been taught to express how you would like, you know, those feelings to come across, then it's gonna it's gonna sound dumb. It's gonna sound like you just picked up a. It's like somebody trying to learn French and just picking up a French textbook and going through it, and you not you know what I'm saying? Like you haven't connected yourself to the actual culture of being able to speak because that's not something that men are taught from young like you have to pick that up like you have to desire expression and there's some who don't so when you don't it, it doesn't come we we're not going to communicate right in that realm with what men want and what women want so you because, agree with carmen when she said that boys are caught up so much that they think women are supposed to cater to them without reciprocating my brother feels like that. My brother is my brother is that archaic caveman carvings on the wall. My dad was a raw steak. Like he was that. Like right. they 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 connect on that level. Me and my mom connect on more like emotional level because I like like when she would cry, I would cry. Like I would mm -hmm. sit with her and like she would go through stuff with my dad and, and when she hurt, I hurt. And mm -hmm. I learned early to be in tune with female feelings. I mean, I don't even, <clears throat> to be honest with you. And this is straight up, I don't even like talking to dudes. Like, I love conversing with females, even if I'm getting yelled at. There's so much stuff to learn in the, like when you're dealing with a woman unloading mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings on you. And and all you got, and most most of the time, I just sit there and I just go like this. Okay. And it's not that I'm not listening, I'm listening to everything, but I'm also listening to what's not being said. Because that's where the magic is. It's, it's, in, what, it's in what's missing. It's never in what's being exposed. Carmen, I want you to talk because you keep looking over. Well, no, I have a question for that. I have a question for that as well. So you might, Mr. Wayne, be one of those guys that, you know, are kind of different from 
the rest of the male species, you know, you might be different. So it's like, you can have this conversation, but you're kind of like on the woman's, on the woman's end. So I don't think you were a good selection as far as like what men want, because <laughs> for the most part, most men don't think like that. Like they're probably right. more like your brother. So, I mean, you seem to be very tapped in to like your emotional side, which is awesome. But like, if I was ha talking to you, I would probably be frustrated because I'm like, no, that's not, that's not realistic. You know, that's not what I get from my spouse. And he right. keeps it 100. Like, even though I'd be like, but I feel, I feel, I feel. And he was like, well, Crystal, I think, I think, I think. And your feelings don't make sense. You know, <laughs> that's the kind of conversations we have. And I know somebody would feel discounted, but like, right. he's being honest. And I can't expect him to be on my level of emotion when that's just where he is. And so, like, I deal in, like, the reality of it all. So is your wife more of the um, male personality in your relationship? <laughs> to, as far as, like, um the ability to express like whereas i can sit and talk to you she has to like mull it over mm. and 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 i had to come to learn to not pry i had to learn something from that because i'm me and i i think fast i talk fast i've arrived at a conclusion and i'm ready to move on like i'm not somebody that if i feel an emotion once i express it i'm done you're a girl I'm, yeah he is a girl yeah okay I, I, I didn't yeah. Think that's that. <laughs> see my eyebrow video when I, when oh I yeah it. he arches eyebrows yeah, <laughs> yeah. that judgment can we get commentation but i mean to be truthful i do <laughs> I, I will say this go ahead carmen Please. no i'm listening i promise no 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 go ahead. no because i didn't want to come on here and be like off the chain like i was in the comments because <laughs> no girl like, i need I you to be off the chain <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I don't buy it. Listen, <laughs> listen this <laughs> lock is too good to be true, right? right. right. That's why I'm it. asking. That's why I'm asking. I'll give, give you some dirt. I gave you some dirt on me. Just so I want you to have what it. What I'm saying is. No, I want you to have it. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm a flirt. I can't talk to women without, and my wife noticed this right away. She was like, why is it that when you talk to women, they're, approach changes immediately and it's 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 because i i, I like i like to like y'all like i want to like y'all i don't um, want like i don't want to like dudes like i don't want to i don't want to vibe with a thought process that i can't get with i, I want to like y'all <laughs> <Wait, laughs> first of all i'm, being, I'm sorry i'm not giving you enough i'm sorry but that's really me it's really me i get it i get what you're saying though it's really me though but see, okay. Uh, so he actually, Carmen, I'm gonna give you something. He give it to me. He already said something when he was explaining his emotions as far as like communicating. He would say how he felt and he was done with it, right? Right. You can go on there because just because you said what you said and you're done with it doesn't mean the conversation is over. over. Right. Right. There's so many times when I'm talking to my spouse and mm -hmm. I have so much more to say, but he wants a yes or no, and I'm like, I don't have a yes or a no. Right. You know, like I, I have like twelve more paragraphs to go, like. I got emotions right now and like men be ready to be done. Right. And that's not fair because then that's a whole lot of things uncommunicated and you got to go harbor on that for like the whole evening. And so you're like, okay, if he's not talking and I'm not going to talk to myself because I really feel like he needs to hear everything I'm saying. <laughs> right. What do you have? So you can go on that. Like why, why you feel like when you're done, that's it. Mm -hmm. We going, we can, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. We can go through your 12 steps. But after we done walking that flight of stairs, it's not twelve steps. What what if it's a hundred? I mean, no, you said the twelve thing. Listen, we gonna walk as many of them steps as you need to to work out whatever you got worked out in there. But once we're done with your one hundred steps or however many steps it is, I don't want to talk about it tomorrow. It's a it's a it's a no. But what if something done. comes up tomorrow? Right. Like it's it's not resolved you, until you it's like resolved. You mold over when you when you. <laughs> Like on your way to going to sleep, you thought two more things, but I was already asleep, and you'd be like, "I'm not gonna wake him up," so I'm gonna bring it up in the morning. I'm gonna look yeah. at you crazy a little bit. I'm gonna look at you crazy. Listen, I'm like, I'm like listen, no, it's, it needs to be resolved. <laughs> listen, in my career field, I work in the legal field. Mm -hmm. We could be on draft twenty, <laughs> but it ain't done till both sides agree we, that it's, it's done. done. Point blank. Period. So it's your wife is your, your wife is okay. Your wife is okay with that, Wayne. With you, he don't on. know. He done walked off. <laughs> no, 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 that's I don't. I'm never dismissive. I'm never well, dismissive. well, you dismiss mentally. Mentally, you're dismissive. 
Mm, no, emotionally, I am. Yeah, you dismiss you. I, yeah, I am. I the am definition of the word dismissive. Let me. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, get me. I'm not. I can't. I want to give you something. I, you, wanted, I wanted to give you. I want you. I want full karma right now. Like I don't want. I don't want you to like me. I want you to hate me and then like me later. Like hate me now. Like I need that because because <laughs> I, I want you to have it because I, I want you to know this ain't I'm a diddy video. Saying. Okay. Um, <laughs> Listen, you're, what you said her. was dismissive. Mm -hmm. It is extremely dismissive because the words from your mouth were, you go through your steps and then we're done. No, 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 you're done. She might not be done. No, we went through your steps though, not mine. I'm walking, we're walking with all the emotions. She said, she said the 12 but steps. If she's, 12 steps but first. if she's trying to speak to you about something, since you're so in tune with emotions and body mm -hmm. language and all this other type of stuff, can we cuss? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's a cousin podcast. Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> then you should be in tune with her enough to know that it's not done. And if Let's she has something through. more, then you should be open and receptive to it. And I'm thinking that you're most likely not because if she talks to you tomorrow about the same issue, you're probably going to say, oh, I thought we talked about this yesterday. We're done. Yes or no? Yes, I will. Now, hold on. Let's That's dismissive. Hold on, hold on. Right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you, but then I'm gonna walk. Let's walk back for a second, because initially she said, "What if I got 12 steps left?" And I said, "Then we're gonna walk you through 12 steps." And she's like, "What if it's 100?" I said, "All right, cool. We're gonna walk you how many steps you need to walk through until that issue is resolved." Mm -hmm. She's like, "But what if something else? What if something else pop up? How would that happen if everything's resolved?" That's that's where I got it. like that's where I'm confused at. Like if you say everything is resolved and then all of a sudden it's, it's a tomorrow thing, how like how is that? You feel what I'm saying? I like, get what you're saying, you but it's it's not to be extremely literal here. Like you, women work a certain way. So right. it's like, we might feel like that was it. That's all we can come up with that night because we felt the pressure to talk about it all because we, we sense that the man is like, okay, figure it out. Say what you need to say because I don't want to talk about this anymore. So we feel pressured into this, you know, communication to talk about what we feel is necessary. But then we go to bed and wake up in the middle of the night and we're like, I, I do feel like this is important as well. We right. Should, I should probably bring this up. So we intended it to be insol resolved that night, but we woke up and it's not. And so my thing is, I feel like it might be unrealistic, but I feel like the man should be prepared to talk about it until it's truly settled, not just in that moment. And I hold her to, oh, well, you said it was over last night. No, no, no. Understand me that it's not. So would you want me to just sit on this and, and build up some more resentment and we have a bigger fight next week? Or do you really want to get to the bottom of it no matter how long it takes? I think a not lot of men don't not understand not that's what women want when it comes to uh, our relationships with them. They think everything is just really cut and dry. And, right. and it's not. I mean, we do right. operate out of our emotions. And even though you say you do too, it's still a masculine emotion. It's not what, right. Right. what we right. go through. So no. even, even our, our, our hundred steps, 12 steps or whatever may take longer than you want them to take because right. we have to process and we have to be ready to move on. So I think, but, it, it, you know, I think you all need to try to adapt. So that's a part about being in a relationship, being able to adapt and be and who you with and work through stuff. You just can't emotionally cut yourself off from me because now our communication is over because you're no longer involved or willing to you know, be a part of my 12 step process. Like you initially said, cause at right. some point you're going to stop paying attention. And right. I know for me, back. I need my man to pay attention. I'm not walking back. Yeah. Right. No, cause, I, I, cause I'm letting, cause I'm letting you, cause I'm letting you talk. I'm not trying to cut you off from where you're at. I want right. to, I like to walk it back okay. also. So you know that I'm paying attention to what you're saying okay. and then we can move forward. So, okay. so we go back and <laughs> walk it back. She said <gasps> the pressure, we feel the pressure and sense. The word and here's this is where my my this is where my counsel counseling psychology brain comes in. When you say feel pressure and sense, that tells me one of two things. One, there might be some assuming going on. I was gonna make an assertion, but I just wanted to make us I, I wanted to say I wanted to use might. You said that there might be some assuming going on. You sense that pressure like where's that pressure coming from is that internal pressure external pressure because i'm not saying hurry up and get to the point because 
that in and of itself is just so I'm not cut like body language no, is pressure. Yeah, Your yeah. mannerisms yes, is pressure. Yes, yes. And so the fact that no, the whole the whole thing that implies pressure and the sense of urgency is the fact that you are allowing me this moment, this moment in particular, not you know, not being literal here, but you we are talking about it and this is the moment that I have. I'm pretty sure your wife knows you, so she knows that you're not gonna want to talk about it the next day. So just dealing with you on a regular basis, that pressure, that sense of urgency is implied in that moment because you're giving her that moment to talk about it. So mm -hmm. it's that, not necessarily like you have to verbalize you, you got like two minutes, right. you know, not, not that, not that per se, but in general, like I know my husband, so we don't have to talk about a lot of stuff and it's not assuming it's pattern. It's understanding pattern. Okay. You See, know? But, that, but, yeah. have, but the thing about the thing about that is I 1000% agree with you, especially in working with juveniles. Like okay. patterns definitely dictate the individual's behavior, 1000%. But in the in the dialogue that, that we're having, we can't really interject that because neither one of us deal with any deal with each other on a day to day basis to be like, and then when you Listen, say, but we're using you know examples I mean? though. I get, I get, I get it. No, I Do get it, you? I, Listen, I, 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 my mother yeah. always says, <laughs> my mother always says every pot got a top and it's clear that your teapot is put together and you found your perfect match with the wife. And I appreciate that, but you wouldn't last in a relationship outside of her. I don't feel like because you're so close-minded that you don't realize it. Okay. And you're going to try to psychology us to death over here. Uh -huh. No, and, I'm not, not, and I'm not, and I'm not, not with it. If I never said that, you wouldn't have used that though. I gave you that. If I, if I wouldn't have said that, you, you mentioned have juveniles. That. Are there any juveniles on this, on this show? No, right? no, no, no. If we're going to be literal. If we're going to be literal. <laughs> listen, listen words be... mean things. Okay. <laughs> they, do. they do. But for you to bring up psychology, you're going to try to psychology us to death. Like that's crazy. Like I, I, I didn't. Did if he I not didn't mention? Give you that. Did yeah, he, yeah, no, I did. He's saying, and he's 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 kicking himself right now for giving us that. No, no, I'm not. I'm. I wanted. You know, here's the thing. I told. I, but I, I. I walk it back. I established this mid beginning. Put that on that, a t-shirt. Walk it back. Walk it back. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. That might, that might be hard. <laughs> I might not do that. Um. But. I. You know, y'all. I don't, let me cut you off real quick, Wayne, because I really want us to walk away from this conversation having a good understanding of right. now they, of what women want, what they want from their men, and what men want from the and, ex, and the expectations from each other. And now I know yes. they did say earlier that you may not be that man because of your emotional connection, but clearly he probably is that man. You know, you said your brother is archaic. Mm -hmm. But I think you have a little bit of it also. I think yeah. you yeah. You, yeah. you are not you and I'm not trying to bat, you know, bash you, you know, we cool and everything, but I do think that you have a, a that part of a component in you of your father and brother as well. You may not yeah. be as bad as them. It's but not it, as dominant, but it's right, there. Right, but it's there. It's there. Yeah. And that's not to say it's a bad thing. It's just right. it's just who you are. You know, yeah. and I think that's why this would make a great conversation for us to you know, say what we want, because a lot of times, you know, I know for me being in a relationship, it's confusing as hell, you know, yeah. and, and like you said earlier, Chris, I mean, you know, we in these relationships with these men, we don't, hell, it's, it's we don't even know where we coming and going sometimes, you right. know, what's expected of us and, and things like that. So I we was, I was hoping that's where this conversation will lead. So we're not trying to Psychology, right. psychology anybody to death but kind of like I'm not, I, 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 <laughs> I love that because I, I go to therapy so <laughs> I don't feel attacked at all like I don't I, don't, I just want that I don't feel attacked at all like okay good because I don't want anybody this, to feel attacked this this is different than how I felt in the comments the reason I feel like it's different is because they get to actually talk to me right and like mm -hmm. like interact as opposed to just hearing it and then you know where I can explain what I said before but right. The fact of the matter is, like, you know, I never ever like to come across like I'm like, like I'm this unicorn because clearly I'm not. Because like, you know what I mean. But it's just I just look I look at the world through a different lens than most dudes do. Yeah, you do. In I the agree. sense that, in the sense that I don't, I don't ever want the person next to me to feel like their say isn't as important as mine like I, I i find that corny you can't control that though like i i like to give as much quarter as possible and mm -hmm. but but in the in the same sense i do realize that i possess 
certain traits within myself that, is, that have gotten me this far. And, and in the recognition of those, of, of those things, it's like, all right, I need to talk to more people who don't care about my feelings and, and really hear what they, what other people have gotten a, like attuned to hear. Like, oh, I'm so used to Wayne saying that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas like somebody who I don't know would be like, oh, you just said this. And I'm like, yeah, I always say that. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, well, let me let me give attention to that. So now I can sh- I, you giving me the opportunity to become the unicorn because then I get to sharpen that edge. Thank Unicorns you. don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> if I shove a horn on a horse, it exists in the world. <laughs> no, nah, I would never. I mean, that's a lot of thought and overthinking. I mean, but you know, yeah, that, uh, that's, that's cool. what it seems like. Right. It's like it's like. Okay, because I feel like everybody has masculine energy and feminine energy Energy, all together, right? right? Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I feel like, you know, of course, women have more feminine energy at the same time. But I feel like for him, it's like he's always battling it because he he knows how he feels, but then he's trying to be right, you know? And a lot of people, you know, it's like, for me, like when I'm high emotions, I don't care about being right. At this point, I don't even want to be fair. You know, I'm just like, this is how I feel. It matters to you or it don't, you know? And that's how he makes me feel. He's like, this is how I feel. It matters to you or it don't. And we just have to stand on both our ends and say, who matters most right now, you know? Yeah. And and that's sometimes where the, conversa- the, the conversation, le- we leave it there. And both of us are mad. And it's like, how do you, as a woman and a man, come together and say, okay, we both matter, but right now... I can only think my thoughts and I can't relate to you right now. You know, like, how do you, how do you get together after that? Once you're being honest with, I feel this way, you feel that way. And I don't, I don't want to give in today. Mm-hmm. Questions like, what do you need from me? Like, what do you need me to, what do you, what do you need from me in this moment? What do you need from me as we sit right here at this impact? What do you need from me? And it's not a necessary, like, if you say it, it's not, it doesn't mean like, you know, oh, wish is granted. Like, but now we can discuss where I'm at as far as that need. Like, like if I'm already at that point where that need can be met, then cool, let's address that. And let's make that a building block, you know what I mean, to the bridge, because there's clearly a gap. Let's make that a building block to the, to the, to the bridge that we build. So, I mean, I, I would start with that question, especially like if we've reached a place where there's no resolution, because I've, I've been in those, in those positions before, I hate them. I can't stand those positions at all, because like, I don't feel like there's never a situation where two people can't come to an agreement about something. I feel like if there's no, if, if people cho- if people choose to disagree because they like that buck, I can't stand that. Like I'm not a high attention person. So what do you need from me in this moment is but what I would add. But that's the thing. So I feel like in the average relationship, when it comes to that, it's always the woman who acquiesces. Like she always just says, okay, right. I'll in. take the low road. I know it well, mm-hmm. you know, let's get this over with. And so I would say I would want from a man for them to kind of divvy it up a little bit more. Like if she took the last L, you you do it this time, you know? And I'm not saying keep track, but it's like, it shouldn't always be the woman, you know, saying, okay, we don't want to argue. Let's just, it you is. Know, it is always us. It's always, it's al- it's us. always us. Even if we stay mad the longest, it's always us giving mm-hmm. in and not really resolving our feelings in the situation just to be okay and not have to continue to just be mad. Right. You know, it doesn't right. matter. It's like we just can't win in relation right. in you know when dealing with a man, especially in an argument. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. So I absolutely agree with that. I would love for the man to be like, okay, okay, this, I get it. Mm-hmm. I can, I can, I can, you know, be humble in this moment. You're right. Cause a lot of times all we need is the validation that you heard us. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it. You heard me. You did. You get it. Right. <laughs> Somewhat. You may not agree, but you understand where I'm coming yeah. from, why I'm feeling right. the way I'm feeling. Can you acknowledge that? Right. Right. And yeah. it's not very often that men do that. No. So that's when communication breaks down. So it affects everything and it affects our, our communication, our sex, the relationship, mm-hmm. how we raise our children affects all of that. Right. 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 Absolutely. Mine is quiet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you you quiet, Carmen. What's up, girl? That's what I was looking at. Listen. I'm, I'm, I'm looking listen. Right at her. I listen. Know, I'm, 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 I'm looking at her right now. I'm re- <laughs> like me yet or no? No. Because <laughs> I'm not buying it. 
because I'm not buying you it. You said it's that true. earlier. What does that mean? You're not buying it. Listen, I am from a small town in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I've lived all over the country. I've seen all types of men, all shapes, sizes, races, religions, all of that jazz. Okay. And I'm not picking up what Wayne's putting down because it just seems very manufactured. Yes, very calculated and manufactured in an unnatural way. This is not how people, this is not how even healthy relationship dynamics are, what you're doing. You mean in now, his, his relationship? Like, I, like I'm, a, I'm a Leo. I, my emotions rule me, okay? Like my chaos is just under the surface at all times, okay? <laughs> and I just feel like if I were in a relationship with you, I would feel like you are constantly, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like you're constantly like- Placating? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like there's always- I'm sorry, you must've heard this before, Wayne. Nah. No. No, no, because you kind of said, you alluded to it the other day when you was like, well, don't you always say the right thing? And I'm like, yeah, because I think think before I talk. And that would, no, but that would drive me absolutely insane because how am I supposed to know when your emotions are genuine or not? Exactly, I'm thinking the same thing. Can I say this? Um, And I love the fact that you said you was a Leo because my mom is a Leo. Where is your wife at? We want to talk to her. She'll like me to talk to. <laughs> my mom don't like me neither. She has, oh, she in the bath actually. Okay. My, yeah, my mom don't like me neither. She say that same thing. She's like, I don't like your tone of voice. I don't even know if you. All right. Like I can't do nothing. Like just that. your body language right now was like you getting ready to like. I'm gonna do something to you, and I'm just like, I don't. You ready I don't to fight? This feels like, why? I, because I'm leaving. But look, but look, look, but look, but look. You came in. You came in. Uh, I, if y'all see me looking my lips a lot. It's not because I'm trying. No, no, because I didn't want to. Like, I don't, like, I don't respond to that type of stuff. Oh, my God. Because you did it on the last episode, too. What did he start with? He started with, I don't know what the hell you started with, but I I ain't like that either. I said, look at my stuff. I said, look at my stuff in the background. That way you can see I know what I'm talking about. Oh. That's how I make fun of myself. I poke fun at myself first before anybody else. But it doesn't come off as you poke fun of yourself. It comes off extremely arrogant. And you know what I, I know. think about extremely arrogant people? That they're extremely insecure. Why are you I said that. Um, so Okay. So are you uh, just <laughs> just like, let's just do I some let's just do that. some th- some therapy right now. So are you insecure, little Wayne? Little <laughs> little, little Wayne. I mean Wayne, are you that album was fire by uh, right? the way. That album was fire. I hadn't listened. I heard it was pretty good. <laughs> I, I heard a few songs that I like, but I didn't listen to all of them. Um, so is okay, that why so you do? You think back. the way you think and your core to to that way and walk it back? Yeah, walk it back, walk it out. Yo, I, if you but if you put that on the shirt, people might not get it unless I say it all the time in like a conversation. But, but you're good at talking. <laughs> you could talk them into it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, God. Okay, so let me start from here. Um, wow. All right, I'm going to hit y'all with it. Forget it. So both my parents were drug addicts when I grew up, right? Um, I got picked on a lot. I got bullied every day in seventh grade. I got chased home from school at least four days a week. Um, I got to high school, and I, I promised myself that I would never feel that way ever again. So I just became super violent. And I got kicked out of my first high school. I dropped out of my second high school. I dropped out of high school two times. Then I was kind of like in limbo. Then I decided to go to college, dropped out of college twice, picked up a nasty habit in 2001, which was ridiculous. Um, so when I look at myself and I'm not as accomplished as I should be, but let's take all that other baggage that I mentioned before, right? Let's take all that. So I got that. And then when I look at my life, and I say, man, like I'm way further back than I should be, right? So I'm always, I'm always looking to be ahead of what other people might have to say about me, even if they might not be thinking it. But I get it out the way, and it does come across as arrogant. The last thing I am is arrogant. I'm actually, I'm afraid every day. Well, when you say it like that, honest. honestly, that comes across as really sad. I feel really bad now. And but but in saying that I, in, in saying that I realize I've overcome a lot. 
and but when it's like you trying to stay you ahead your life based off of your timeline not society's timeline right, right. it's like you constantly right. trying to strive for other people's yeah. approval expectation no, i'm trying to sh- shut people up why see, but who no, the fuck cares like, why that's not what's happening. okay so i mean i i heard i get it you know and you know you did have to overcome a lot and i applaud you it's commendable it's awesome but like you are working against yourself to feel like you have to think for us and insult yourself for us. Cause you're assuming then that we are going to insult you, you know? So it's like, you're doing like something very unnecessary for some, and, and you're thinking for other people. We don't have a problem with you having books in your background, you know, like that's cool. Nice decor. You know, what if we didn't think anything of it, but then you come in like that and we're just like, Oh, you, you put us on the fence with you when you want us to just have a conversation with you and treat you like a normal person would treat a person. You know, it's like, but I don't also mention that I make horrible first impressions. I have historically, I make horrible first impressions. Well, I, I'm giving you a tip right now. Stop doing what you've been doing and you'll improve. <laughs> That's it. Cause it's, it's not necessary. It's like the people you compliment their shoes and it's like, Oh, my toes aren't polished. Your shoes are cute though. Right. <laughs> They're still cute. Just say right. thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, just but you know you. what? You know, as women, we I know me part can't say, oh, I know I struggle with that as well, not being able just to receive a compliment. And maybe okay. that goes and maybe that goes back to something I've dealt with in childhood because I was bullied as well. And you know, and if somebody just say something and I always gotta find the flaw. Now I'm not saying that I try to overachieve to try to keep you from looking because if I go out with chip toenails, I mean I expect to see my chip toenails look that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't try to be perfect and hide it, but I, I get it. I get yeah, it. and you know, like I I can I can say that I went through trauma as well. Like I I, I feel like everybody been through a right. lot. Like I went through a lot, but I feel like the things that I overcame just kind of made me more so like I cannot be caught up in that that mindset where I'm thinking for everybody and I I know what they think about me. Like, I feel like that's honestly not my part. You know, like I can't, I can't be a whole being if I'm worried about what you think of me. Yeah, You know, Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. I can't like, that is so crippling. I feel like if we are always trying to be three steps ahead of everybody else, because how they're going to attack us, like we're assuming everybody's against us. And I just don't see. And you got to think about how that's manifesting in your home too, especially with you having a young daughter in your home and how she viewing the world and growing and learning herself. I mean, I mean, I'm not criticizing you as a parent. I don't know, but I'm just saying these are some things to think about when you have because you have her in the house and your wife also i mean tell her to get out the tub yeah. we want to talk to her <laughs> hey, i would love i mean because she might give us some insight right. you know on what makes you you know high quality as you're telling us you know you are who you are i believe you but it's just like you know it's kind of hard like i could talk myself up all day but I have to let my husband come here and say, okay, yeah, she's a good wife. I can't say I'm a good wife. I'm not wife myself, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, right. I can't say. But it's like, I, I really feel like bad for people who feel like they have to insult themselves. And, and I, I know I've been there, you know, like yeah. if you listen to my podcast long enough. I do, people people do say it's self-defecating in some way, yeah. but I feel like I'm just being honest, but I'm not doing it so you don't do it for me. I'm doing it because... I am a hard, I'm hard on myself, but not to prepare myself for other people being hard on me. You know, it's just, that's my personality. You, you know, should, you should definitely right. check out our podcast, Crystal Clell. <laughs> it's my personality. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's like, I'm just, that's who I am. I'm going to be hard on myself and actually being married and having a child made me ease up. Like, okay, everything is hard. If right. you're going to be hard too, you're not going to be okay. You know, yeah. so ease up. So maybe so also, so also, also, because I definitely wanted to mention this, uh, um, when me and her first got together, like I literally had nothing. Like she had nothing to base. She had nothing to base her her love and support on. Like when you pull somebody out the gutter, like there's a part of yourself that wants to succeed just to make good for that person. Like I don't like if it was if it was just me. Like my success wouldn't even matter that much, but mm-hmm. when somebody finds you and and lifts you up out of a situation, when if you look at that situation, they had nothing to gain, like nothing to gain from it. My success is based on I want 
what I want the sacrifices that she made for me early to write themselves come to fruition because I know and, and, and this is something that I know like for a fact like, has, she, has she told you this because I think that's something you putting on no, yourself no, she t- I do put it on myself yeah I'm, yeah She's never because done. if she pulled you off from nothing, she obviously saw something you in that moment, not necessarily right. of what you could achieve and be successful. I mean, you'll never be able to be that person that you are trying to be that you think she wants for saving you. If that makes sense. Because she wanted you, like she saw you. That's what she wants. In not to say that you should be gutter, right. but you know what I'm saying? You still should, but whatever you do, you should be doing it for yourself. And I feel I felt like he's just trying to say like he she motivates him right to be the best, and, best and that's good and that's good and that's, that's amazing yeah that's it awesome. is right I don't know maybe <laughs> I'm just jaded because I you know I had a horrible marriage horrible divorce and I'm just really I don't know. look so what did you look. what did you learn from that so what did what did he um, not give you that you needed as a woman to be um, who you needed to be in that relationship. My ex-husband was physically abusive, Mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, psychologically, all of those things, right? So it's my ex-husband, yeah. And, you know, I found myself being the girl that I would always turn my nose up at. Like, why won't she just leave? You see what I'm saying? But it wasn't until I was in that situation that I realized that it's not that easy to just walk away you know what i'm saying and he was a very um cold person you know what i'm saying and here i am bright-eyed and like bushy-tailed and like you know love is all you need in this world and you know you pour everything you've got into a person and i literally walked away empty with nothing nothing in my bank account, nothing in my spirit, like nothing. Right. Right. And so I think what that relationship did for me, it did some good things and it did some bad things. The good thing is that I know now not to compromise on anything that I want for myself. Right. When it comes to my personal relationships, but what it also did was now I just don't trust anybody, which is why I have a hard time buying whatever it is that Wayne is trying to put out to the world about being you know um this perfect guy I got a book for y'all it's called Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris and in this book this guy on the outside was everything that you could possibly dream for in a man like emotionally intelligent financially stable like the whole kit and caboodle but he was a psychopath okay Mm. (laughs) I'm not saying that Wayne here is a psychopath. It was implied. People are not. Listen, we're we're always meeting someone's representative self, right? right this right, is right. Wayne's representative self right, right now, in my opinion. In my opinion, right? So, I just I just really don't I don't trust anybody, and I and and for me. Listen, my profession is to read and comprehend and understand words, okay? Say what you mean and mean what you say, and I don't like all the walkbacks. Oh, God. Mm. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I probably went off on like some weird tangent, but I mean, what do women want? I want transparency. Right. I don't True. want you to just kiss my ass because you don't want it <laughs> right now. I want like... And I feel like I'm kind of much like a dude. Like we don't always have to talk like all the time, and we don't always have to like hold hands. Like, right. like I'm, I'm good off of all of that, to be honest with you. But like, if there is an issue, let's resolve it right, just not when someone else wants it to be over. Not and for time me, frame, like you see what I'm saying? Course. And Crystal mentioned previously that we're always the ones to just bow out first. Mm-hmm. That will never happen again in life. Because I spent seven years taking L's. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, uh, yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. You. Well, here's, a, here's a, this is what I, if, if I may make a request mm-hmm. from you. Okay. Ask, ask me something. Ask, ask me something. Like, I, look, I like, and I, I, I feel your vibe. I get it. But I don't get it. I get it, but I don't get it. Don't I don't get it experientially. I hear everything you're 
you're saying. It is understandable that you feel that way. But let me tell you one thing I don't have time for is to like not say what I'm thinking. I always do. So please ask me something. Ask me anything. Y'all, I, I don't ask me. Ask me. Crystal I'm asked me something. Ask. I don't have he, any he questions at the moment. I don't have you. any. I don't have any questions at the moment. I was just here to stay. Because she said, because you said you're not picking up. You're not basically you're not buying what I'm selling. I'm not, I'm not really selling you anything. But I definitely want to be asked something. This entire conversation has been a showcase. At the price is right. <laughs> nah, but I told you I was trash. I told you things that was trash about me. I ain't. I didn't. I, I, I've, I've laid. I've laid. I've laid dirt out there. Like I, I can't. I can't be. I can't project myself as a perfect guy if I if I smear dirt on myself. It just does You know what I mean? But no like, one's perfect, so you don't get points for that. But you said that, not me. I didn't call myself perfect. You said I can't believe that you're this perfect guy. That's what you said. Did the word "perfect" come out of my mouth, Crystal? Yeah, yeah, man. Are you going okay. to listen to playback? You did say it. I just asked my confidant oh, here, and she corroborated that I said perfect. Okay. I want to. I didn't see. It. I didn't see. It. I didn't want. I want to be. I just want to be asked a question. I don't really don't but, have a question but, at the moment. Okay. So, but what do you? What do you want us to know that we? You feel like we're not getting about you because we don't have questions. What? What do you like, feel like you have? Like, like for example, Wayne, when because you and I talked behind the scenes when the podcast aired and the comments started coming through, I was like, Wayne, get out there and respond. So I, cause I want a dialogue on SoundCloud. Of course, you know, Hey, I need some attention. So I was <laughs> like, get out there and you know, come, you know, but a part of him. And if I'm stating this wrong way say, so you was like, what? I mean, you was like really shocked at yeah, the commentary. I was because I, I was, yeah. Right. I was offended. But, but yeah, he was he was angry. He was offended. He he didn't understand how y'all walked away from that conversation, right. feeling that type of way about him. He just could not fathom it, and he I was actually issue, trying to come to y'all podcast to defend himself. I was like, I, think, I I think that my issue with the episode was just the constant. I call it mansplaining. You call it walking back. Um. And just the over talking and just like it was it just came on like mad strong and i was like i was really thinking to me like who is this motherfucker like come on like this is not how you conduct a conversation you were you know cutting off people and i was like this is not who you are right now and who you were on that episode of two different people there was growth that was his first interview right mm -hmm. was it your so first interview i yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've well, never, first I've never, I've never had, your first podcast. Your first podcast. No, I'm, yeah. period. I've never had a live interview. Period. Oh, okay. Like I, every every bit of my content that you see is me just talking to a camera. So I you actually, yes. Yeah. So yeah, you. So that's the thing. So I think a lot of times, if we get feedback from like a wide variety of people, there's going to be something that we're not gonna like. But that's the thing that you use to help you, and it helped you. So I mean. I guess like I understand you were offended, but it like this is just her view. And like some people, they're not gonna see it your way. They're gonna see what they see. And you can't change it and you have to be okay with that. It's plenty of people in this world. I can name them off right now that do not see it for me one bit. Like name one and I'm okay look, name one person. I have, stand, I have to stand in my truth. <laughs> Call uh, you name oh, person. you want me to name some folks? I'll name names. Let me tell you. Okay, so I've been blocked by Oh my God. <laughs> I have been blocked by, you know, because my name on Twitter is Petty by the Pound because I just, reality TV is my escape from like, my day life is just stressful. So my release is reality TV. And so these reality TV stars don't see it for me one bit. And, you know, I've been blocked by the best. The reality uh, TV? Really? Yeah. Shout out to Kenya. Shout out <laughs> to Kimbella. Shout out to some guy from some show that's not on air anymore. Um, who else has blocked me? Oh, Jackie Christie from Basketball Wives. She's Shut blocked me. Shut up, girl. Yeah. You famous. <laughs> I mean, I have made the shade room like once or twice. She, she at the block party. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but listen, but listen, I'm saying all of that to say like, I use my words and I say what I mean. And my Twitter page is where I can you know, really be my authentic self because we all know when we're at our day jobs, like we have to code switch. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like <sighs> for, for 10 to 12 hours a day, I have to make sure that my body mannerisms are together. My facial expressions are together. There are no less than 10 emails in my draft inbox because I just can't be blasting these off yet. I have to let them simmer so that I don't lose my gainful employment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So 
I'm the type of person that, listen, there is no sugarcoating it ever. I spent seven years being silent and I won't do that anymore. Wow. Well, good for you. I applaud you. I do what I can. <laughs> for, the, for the culture. <laughs> Yes, yes, so, okay, yes. I just want to ask, I have an um, anonymous issue that came through my email, so I want to get all of you views, all the three of your views on that. Um, mm-hmm. So it's anonymous, so I can't say who it is. So she's, uh, I guess it's a guy. I don't know. I need some clarity. Uh, it's a girl. I've been talking to this guy off and on for four years. We live in the same state about an hour or so from one another. Our schedules greatly conflict. He's a single dad with full custody of a toddler son. We have seen one another three, maybe four times on a date over the years. Mostly we text. He would come around, take a few months or so, talk a few months or so, then I would kind of cut contact. The cycle then repeats. We have, an, an, we have never slept together or anything sexual between us. He is a few years younger. This time things are different. We have been talking a lot, still no date, mostly texting. I asked, was the reason he keeps popping up because we never slept together, and he insists it is not. He claims he genuinely is interested, is very attracted to me. We connect, blah, 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 blah. So my question is, should I go ahead and dive in this time and see what happens or continue playing this game? I mean, I'm interested to a degree, but it has been so much inconsistency that I just can't take him seriously. Oh my God! You want to go first? Yeah, somebody. I yeah. Crystal. Uh-uh. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what she. Uh, Wayne. Mr. Wayne. <laughs> Come on, I'm man. So she she looking I'm for so, something. For... I'm so trash. Hold on. <laughs> I'm so trash. You want me to go first? No, I'm about to. Yeah. I'm. I know what I'm gonna say, but it's. <laughs> I'm so trash. Sweetheart, <laughs> sweetheart, you have a pen pal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do not waste your time. Four years off and on. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, Pam. <laughs> no sex, no emotional connection, nothing. And if, and if y'all are only an hour away from one another, there should be no reason why. Like, that's not even long distance. Like, y'all technically, like, <laughs> you can get from one side of Dallas to the other side in about an hour. So, Same like, with Houston. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you have a pen pal. He's probably was stringing you along from like various other relationships like you need to move on to greener pastures yeah this is not healthy i don't (laughs) even understand why this is even an issue so what this look like is so you know like this is just from my younger years all right you got it you spread it out like you got you can't see my hands are on the table um you spread it out you got the freak chick who always down for whatever then you got your emotional, uh, what do you call that? You got your safe space. You got mm-hmm. your safe space where you can feel like a regular boyfriend. But you know what I mean? You can get that feeling off as far as like the, hey, you know, good morning. You know, you probably look good today. What do you, you know, you know, the, the little, mm-hmm. little G. Yeah. Little, mm-hmm. that, 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 we'll get that. it. Mm-hmm. So you get that, you get those off with that. And just, because I mean, because like I said, hour away. Like in Brooklyn, you can get to the Bronx in an hour. Like it's just all you gotta do is hop on a train. Like so, it's really he just she's she's there for some like emotional safety net. Like that's pretty much all that is. That's just a it's just some place to put your charger, know that ain't nobody gonna steal it. While you over here working your phone, and then when right. your battery died, you go back to your charger. That's all that is. I'm just trying to figure out what she thinks that she's diving into, other than foolishness. Because he's okay. never given her any reason <laughs> to feel she, as if he wanted to be left a lot out of that email. So listen, so this, so I have a lot of friends, right? Mm-hmm. And I can almost tell my friends at the jump, like when somebody has just set the story to hide that they're married, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm. it seems like he has the story said to hide that he's married, mm. you know. And he he can't devote any time because if he wanted sex, he would have made that hour drive. Okay. So that's not the case. He's just a married man that just needs. You know, some outside attention sometimes when he don't feel right at home. And I just, I don't understand where she's coming from because she even says, like, should I really give this a chance or keep playing? Okay, if you know it's a game, keep playing. I mean, it's a game. You right. understand it. You, she realizes it. She so, so, not- let me, so let me ask you, ladies, something. Why, as women, do we consider playing the game 
versus just walking away from this foolishness. Because society tells us that we need a body. We need a warm body. I don't know. For for me, for me, like I didn't want to play the game, you know? And so I was going to be the person that, you know, put a wrench in it. Like I don't play, you know, right. like I'm real serious. So if you're playing no fun here, you right. know? So I don't know. I don't, I can't speak for every woman, but it seems like she understands there's nothing real here. I right. feel like she wanted you to give her permission to let him smash. I'm sorry. That's what I, but she was, I can't she was believe going I'm to about to say this, but I agree with Wayne. <laughs> Yes. She wanted some confirmation for whatever it is that she's intending on doing anyway. Because it's like, but it's nothing. It's, it's absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. This man ain't I don't know. Men, if they want something and it's an hour away, right. there's no stopping them. Unless they just they they don't have cars. I had a I, I had a friend who was kind of in this situation. She dated this guy for mad long and she never met his family. He stole a car for like a month. <laughs> like, listen, he would disappear randomly and she's like, We're in like the best relationship ever. And I'm like, but no. Nah. <laughs> like that's not what? that's what? not a relationship this man is keeping you away from his real life oh my yeah. gosh that you know? is sad no I just maybe she's desperate for just some type of companionship so she's taking what she can get it seems like it's one of the I think situations. that's what you said earlier about society you know makes us think that we need somebody in our life peace of man better yeah. than no man at all we'll just I take whatever know. kibbles and bits they give us I tell people all of the time that I am alone. I am not lonely. Okay. okay. Like, look, because like I say, I'm not about to settle for any of these freaking shenanigans anymore. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger here, you know? And if that means being, you know, single until I'm in my forties, until the right guy can come along, then that's just what it's going to take. So okay? ain't no, ain't no sharing for you. Ain't no voluntary, voluntarily sharing for you. You're not going to. Yeah. None of that. No poly. Okay. No none of that. I can't. Can't do it. Can't do it. But Miss Anonymous, I want you to um find some self love, dear. Mm -hmm. I want for you to want more for yourself. I want for you to block that phone number. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Cause she be cutting him off. Like the reason so, is yeah, so is inconsistent. She, is she, is she, she dating, keep dealing with him. Is she outside dating or is she like know. just waiting? Like waiting by the phone. She she's playing like in a bow wow video just, or something. She sounds like she just waiting for him to do his usual reset. But, but didn't it say that she cuts him off from time to time and then he'll start yeah. calling again? Yeah, that, that's why I feel like yes, yeah, games. So one of them definitely has a full time relationship and they they just mess with them in the spare what time. What if it's her? Mm. What if it's both of them? Ooh. What if it's her that's playing the games? Both. What type of what type of man is this, Wayne? Did you what what type of man is this? This playing this game? I don't know. I need you to be the man whisperer for us. He's a, he's a, he's a loser, dude. That's what he is. I, I don't hang out. I don't hang out with dudes like that. Like, <laughs> you don't hang out with dudes, isn't that what you okay, said earlier? Thank you. took the words right out of my mouth. He don't like talking to them. Took the words right out of my mouth. I was gonna say, but you said you didn't hang out with dudes. Friends. I got five male friends, and all of them is married. Hmm. But they're still dudes, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, would you, so what are their relationship oh, dynamics? Uh, from, from the outside looking in, obviously. They, they, they listen. They like. So you just surrounded what? by listeners, huh? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean like do boys. Like they mad. They rather just. They don't want no beef. Like if you say, let's say you, you know what I'm saying, Harmon. If you say I need you to go to Home Depot and get this white picket fence eight by 13 and then I bring you to 13 by eight by accident. And and before you even, I come through the door and I, I'm happy and you got the, I'm going to turn right, say, say that. They pleasers, they pleasers. And, but so, now, you women describe... want pleasers, but we don't want like weak ass dudes either. <sighs> see, now see, that's, that's, so that's, now that's confusing now, that's confusing. That's a that's a very thin line, good boy, bad boy. Hold so we on. have I to make a distinction. To be attentive. I don't lean forward to be aggressive, and plus, I don't like sitting back all the time. I feel like I'm, I want to. I'm just saying. Why we always got to get We're, the explanation for the day? <laughs> what? You are like most times a thumbnail on our screen most times, right? So we can't even tell that you're doing all this stuff. Okay? But she did. 
she she mentioned it before. She said, I, I'm sitting up like I want to do something. I'm just letting her know I'm sitting up because I want to, um, that's my attentive seat. Well, well, thank you. I guess, I guess the, um, the sharp eye of Carmen, he's explaining to that eye. He don't want no problems with you. But for me, I'm just like having a conversation. And that is that. Um, Carmen got him on his toes. <laughs> oh, but I was going to ask, yep. like, so as far as like a man and you, you you tend to be like more, you know, emotional and you got, you are surrounded with pleasers. But what if one of them had an issue in their marriage? What if one of them came to you and said they were unhappy and they were considering, you know, looking on the outside? What would you tell him? Mm. Kind of understand the situation and how he feels and Good what question. you think he should do. Like, what would you tell him? And I already know the answer to this, but I just want to, I just want to ask first you. First and foremost, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you like, like if you cheat, you're going to get caught. Like, that's just facts. Like, I, <clears throat> if you cheat, you're going to get, you said looking on the outside, did you mean infidelity? That's what I thought she meant. That's Infidelity. Yeah, that's I, just, yeah. I just want to make sure. I just want to be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Thank first you. of all, I would. If you cheat, you're gonna get caught. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. Like, first of all, you didn't get married to cheat. You could have stayed single and just been who you was being. Like, nobody gets married to cheat. Like, nobody gets married with the intention of cheating. First of all. Second of all, how often do you speak your mind? Do you have the room to speak your mind? Are you and and in most of these in all of these cases, um, I would say like two of them have room to speak their mind where they can really say what they're thinking because like they're, they're, their wife is their homie but the other three like their their wives are kind of like stubborn and like their way of thinking is their way of thinking mm -hmm. i mean i will quote one of the wives because she said verbatim the world would be a lot would be a would be a much better place if everybody thought like me and we all laugh Oh, she crazy. So do you understand if he was looking on the outside? Because I would, because for me, like, I knew you were going to say, no, don't cheat. And that's fine. Like, I wouldn't condone cheating ever. But I would condone, condone someone seeing about themselves if they were in a one-sided relationship, you know? Because I don't think it's fair on either end. I don't think it's okay for a man to be dominant and having to say all the time. And I don't think it's okay for a woman to be dominant and having, it, having her say all of the time. So my heart will go out to the person who's stuck with someone like that where they don't get a say because you're not being your full self. And I'd rather, I'd rather you act out, cause attention, which may, you know, sound like I'm condoning cheating, but I want you to see where you are. Like, wake up, something to shake you into life. Anything. Yeah. Right. Because I don't, I don't agree with that. I just feel like somebody's sitting there just, yes, whatever you say. Yes, yes whatever you say. And I'm like, somebody please. <laughs> but that you, you take the, the take the batteries out. <laughs> if, you, if you find a dude like that, you got to look at his relationship with his mom. Like he's. Do y'all he believe that, that, ladies? Do y'all believe that? I don't. He's psychologying us. <laughs> I don't. I so don't I mean, people I... been saying that for years about the the guys, and you 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 marry somebody, you determine how. Um... Hey, honey, my husband just walked in. About how determine how a man will treat you by the way he treat his mother. I don't know if I buy that anymore. No, no. What I'm saying is the way, like, yeah, no, I am saying that. But like, <laughs> if he's a yes, like a yes man, no man person, like uh -huh. maybe his relationship with his mom is like that. Uh -huh. Or if he's, or if he's like, no, this is the, you know. And it's weird because my parents before they got separated, they had a really, it was dysfunctionally good. That doesn't it make. Like, that doesn't make sense. Just, I thought you said they were both on drugs really bad. They were. They were it was like organized chaos. Like when okay. they were good, they were great. When they were bad, so they were bad. functioning like, drug addicts. Yeah, yeah, they went to work and all that. Oh, like, okay. They had jobs. They both had jobs. Like none of them never lost their job because of it. Like they were weekend warriors, is what I like to call them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, put my business out there. It's all good. <laughs> um, but nah, it's it's you know, we learn we learn our how to. And the thing is also the reason I'm the way I am. I want to break that down as far as like relationship wise. It's because my parents used to argue for no reason all the time. Like my mom, I like she's like Napoleon complex, like little lady. Uh, you can't walk away from her if you're if she's yelling at you in your face and you try to turn your back and walk away from her, she'll probably swing at you. And that's like I never wanted a relationship like that. So like I don't like that kind of friction. I try to eliminate any any opportunity for anything like that. Like I always have. And the moment I got around a female and she was the slightest bit, you know. Like that kind of energy, like uh, no aggressive. See, here's the thing: my wife is aggressive, and her aggression comes from athletics. Her aggression doesn't come from conflict. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
like she's a, like her aggression comes from competitiveness and competitive spirit and athletics and stuff like that and, and constantly pushing herself like that that's the level of her, of her aggression right not conflict okay so i never like the moment i saw that somebody's energy just got up for conflict nope next like I, so you didn't want anybody like your mother with that with that energy like your mother that type of energy i ducked it at all costs i just didn't like it like i'm i'm la- I'm mad laid back i mean i'm hype but like as far as like if we conversing mm-hmm. i want it to sound like this okay. i don't never want it to sound like dino two dinos going so, I mean, only this. so i have a question so when you said it's probably his relationship with his mother so is it like the reverse situation like if your mother made you want to find women different from her, would it, was he looking for a woman different from his mother? Was his mother too meek and mild and he was looking for a strong woman? Or was his his mother very strong? I'm trying to understand, like, how, like, if his mother was very, you know, dominating, how he ended up with a dominating woman. If, if we're Maybe saying- he's just attentive. Maybe he's just attentive to that. Maybe he saw his dad being attentive. Just his level of attentiveness is based around that attentiveness that he, he gave his mama, his mom was given that's okay. that's as far as I that's what that's as far as I can go with that as far as my mind is my mind digs with that. Okay. Mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't say I don't feel like everybody um is you know, I think naturally on accident without even trying you end up with a parent, you know? I think yeah. so too. Without even trying. Like you probably go went out of your way to find someone totally different and you still ended up with a parent. And I, I just think it's unavoidable because of patterns in our brains and how we work but Mm -hmm. i do feel like if you're being mindful in that moment you are not necessarily um acting you're not necessarily just doing things because you feel like you have to you're doing things because you're weak like i feel like any man that's just gonna sit there like for me personally i don't want anyone who is just going to let me have my way that's not attractive at all i don't i don't want it I, i feel like with everything with women, for the most part, even when we're arguing, we just want you to be not even mad or just communicating or listening. I tell you, we want validation. So someone sitting up there just saying, yes, 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 yes. It's like, you want me to shut up. You're Mm -hmm. saying yes, so you can get out from around me. Like, don't do that. So it's like, I guess I would like for men to have this balance of they want to do you know, nice things for a woman, mm-hmm. not necessarily because they feel like they have to to keep the peace, but they have an actual want. And I want men to find the, the want. women that they want to be that man for. You right. know, that's what I want for men. I don't want them to just tie themselves to relationships because, oh, it's time to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, my right. father was married. Or my mom and dad were married for 50 years. This is what I'm supposed to do. I want people to do things because they want to right that's, that's why you have I, to marry the guy that's ready and i think that we talked about that on what men want podcast because a lot of men they just marry because it's time for them to get married they care about the person they with they love yeah. the person but it's not in my mind who they truly want to be with because if it is they will want to do those things like you said right. that makes right. you happy and make you feel you know like you want to feel in the relationship Right. Yeah, I would like I would like to throw a wrench into every situation where people are doing stuff because they saw someone else do it. Like, do it because you want to do it. Like, quit marrying the chick you don't really want to be with. Like, but then as but, but then as as women though, uh, Crystal, we have to be able to identify these men that are not ready because our ready is not their ready. So when we're ready to get married, we so ready to get married, we're willing to think that we could change this man or we willing to accept just this little bit of something that. But see, uh, I don't think that that's wanting to get married. I think that's wanting a wedding. Yeah. Could be, it could be a little, it could be a little bit of both, but I, I, again, I think, you know, society and we, a lot of women are raised to get married. Yeah. It's just, that's true. it's just that, recently that, that, that a lot of women now are very ambitious and get going for their careers, deciding not to have kids or, and deciding not to be married. This is just a recent phenomenon, you know, before all- we wanted to be married. I know for me, I'm the marrying kind. Well, I mean, I, of course, I mean, I'm married and I wasn't opposed to being married, but I sat there and watched like all of my friends get married like early twenties oh. and, you know, go from their mom's house into 
being with a husband or whatever. I, That's what I did. I watched my entire friend group do that. And I was like, it won't be me, you know? Cause it's just like, what is the point? Like, I don't want to do this because you eventually you do it because of tradition. You need to be married. I don't want to do anything for that reason. Cause I feel like down the line, we're going to end up looking at each other crazy. Cause we don't want to be here because we did it for all the wrong reasons. Right. So, you know, I was with, you know, my husband for like seven years before we got together. And it wasn't because we didn't know what we wanted to do. It was because I, don't necessarily want uh to be married because you get married after so long you know right, like right let's just 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 be who we are let's have what we have and when it's time it's time because we feel like it's right not because oh it's the natural progression you know it's like look right only thing i knew is i didn't want to shack up that was just my excuse to have my own place <laughs> for know, a long time right. so, by myself. so you both were ready when that time came right what you're and it's okay. like we lived life as much as you possibly could you know in that adult you know in that age range yeah. i feel like in the 20s you still ain't making enough money to really really live right, right. in your 20s and so when you you know get when you get married at whatever age you get married and you kind of grow together then y'all you know are exposed to like finer things in life and then y'all right. kind of see okay this is what i wanted and i wanted to have someone to share it with Right. But I feel like now that the prime age to be married, I'm going to say 35, 40, because, you know, women are ambitious. We want to live life. We want to see what's out there. And right. then when we get to the age where we can actually provide that life for ourselves, right? we can determine if we need a man or not. Hey, if we want a man or not. And right. I feel like that's where they are today. And I'm, I'm so happy for women. And it takes men a longer time to mature anyway. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I don't think they mature, actually. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's like a thing. Do you agree, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they do. I just, I just think they just say, "Okay, I'll sit here long enough." Like, have y'all nah, seen? I mean, Maybe she'll go that. away. <laughs> yeah, I can't what? say nothing. I bought, I bought four pairs of sneakers in the last month. Oh gosh, see, yeah, I need to go up. I'm yeah, just being honest. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm, a, I'm assuming there was money there for you to do that, so it's not like you were being reckless. Uh, I think it is a, a sore say, spot for his say, wife, isn't it? I would say, yeah, it is. I would say two pairs of those didn't need to happen. So, 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 oh. so, did you put your, did you put your family in, no, you know, no, no, no. red because you had to have two more pairs of sneakers or did you just spend a little bit money than you, a little more money than what you should have? It was that, it was that. I would do, that's, that's one thing I never do. Like, I'll never jeopardize off in my family because I want to look cute. Like, right, that's what I, right. That's so that's what I'm saying. Like, th there's a difference. There's a difference between you know spending too much and you gotta die. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like where where we gonna live? Because you need two more pairs of shoes. Can right. we live in them shoes? You know, like I get it. Like I get it. It's okay. You you get to do that. I'm assuming because you did it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because you did it. <laughs> it's easier to ask for forgiveness think, than permission, right? That's you're rebel. We we understood. We, we hey, he not a you not a rebel, Wayne. You're a good guy. Are you comfortable being a good guy? <laughs> you know, some guys don't want to be good guys. That's a real no, thing. Here's the thing. I want to be the best man I can possibly be for my daughter. So when she makes a decision to, if she decides on a man, I want to be that measuring stick. I want her to be like my dad. Would be the that's the kind of man I want to see myself with. And I've and, and the crazy thing is, I didn't always feel that way. It wasn't until I found out that I was having a girl mm -hmm. that my my whole mode switched. Like, cause like we grow up with that man pride, like that's force fed to us. Oh, can't wait till I have a little man. He's gonna be just like me. You gonna go to the barber? I'm gonna get him the fade with the half moon and all this other stuff. Like all that stuff you grow up, all that stuff you grew up being force fed. Mm -hmm. I would I can honestly say that having a daughter, and I don't have. I don't have a son, so I can't say this out of experience. I'm just saying from where I sit right now. Having a daughter has made me way more of a man than I feel like I could have been had I had a son. Because when you have a daughter, you have to explain things. You can't just bogart a girl into listening to you because you want her to develop in reasoning and you want her to develop emotionally. So you can't just bogart her. You won't do this. Like, that's corny to me. Like, if there's men that do that and mm -hmm. they raise their daughters, good job. But that's not the way that I would choose to do it. Like when she and I want her always to be able to confide and talk to me so that I deal with her in that fashion, like open door policy, whatever you got to say. If I'm messing up, call me out on it. If you saw me do something stupid, call me out on it. I didn't have that quarter with my parents. Like my parents would mess up. Like they would, you know what I mean? Like they would mess up and I couldn't say nothing. And that's, I did not like the way that felt. So I never wanted that. 
Like, I don't want to hypocritically raise my child because that, that causes too much confusion later on in life. You're developing their ideology. And if you develop it in hypocrisy, it's not going, it's not going to bode well, in my opinion. So you ended up okay, though, right? It took a while. But you ended up okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm chilling. Are you okay then? Like, cause that's my thing too. Like, I, I hate. Like, of course, we're gonna go through things in life. Nobody's life is gonna be perfect. Right. We're gonna go through things, and so whatever it took to make Wayne who he is today, it took that. Unfortunately, you know, you don't have all good experiences, but you are who you are today, and you're proud of that. You love and respect your grind. Like all at work from then to now is here. So, I mean, I feel like we can't, we can't alleviate problems. Like, I feel like a lot of people are on this mission to where, oh, nothing bad happens. And I'm not knocking, you know, what you're going to do as far as raising your child. But I'm saying you can be a perfect father and she's going to look back and say, you know what? My dad was this and I don't appreciate that. You know, like we, like Mm -hmm. my child, I have a daughter too, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm doing everything. I feel like I wish my mom would have. And guess what? There's going to be points in our relationship. My daughter's going to look back and say, mom, I wish this was, I wish this was the case instead. And I'm going to be like, well, I did my best, but that makes me look at my mom and all the things that I have a problem with and say, well, she did her best. Right. So maybe just maybe your parents in their dysfunction did their best right. little as it was, you know? And yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of what I do and how I think as far as like, Life ain't going to always hand you a bowl of cherries. It's never going to do it. You know, you're never going to get that. But we have to appreciate what we got to become who we are. No, I, I, I listen to gems that my dad gave me, though. That's the crazy thing, like, in, in saying all of those things, like, that they went through. Like, my dad, my dad kicked cold turkey. He didn't need a program. He didn't need rehab. None of that. Like, he just, one day, he was like, I'm done with this. And I've always admired his strength and, and respect him for that. He gave me mad gems to live by on a day-to-day basis, like the way that I keep myself, just like always being, like as a man, keeping yourself clean, sharp, no dirty clothes, like present yourself how you want to be treated. Like you said, Present yourself how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Like he always, like that's something he instilled in me. If you're five minutes early, you're late. Like all of those things, like he instilled that. Mm -hmm. Like like all of those, like I'm mad gems. And like my mom gave me the freedom to, to dream. Like when I wanted to model when I was young, she was like, do that, but look out for this. Like she, she hit me to the pitfalls because she fell for some of the parts. So now, like when I look at my pitfalls in life, now I'm like, all right, I'm glad I went through that. So now I can pass that on. So now, nah, I mean, I'm thankful for everything that happened because it, whereas the scars are there, when I look at those scars, I'm like, I remember what I learned from that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always grateful. Like, I'm never like, oh, I hate that that happened. Like, I love, I, I, I love the fact that I can learn from those things. Like, I look at my physical scars on my body from some of the stuff that happened to me in the street. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, like, I remember that. And I, I look at myself sometimes and I, in, in the mirror, I'm like, hey, you remember that? Like, out loud. Like, I, I appreciate the things that I went through. Like, I hated them at the time, but... I, I, I wish we take those things that we appreciate and raise our kids differently because for whatever reason, we feel like something wasn't done right or we was done some sort of disservice right. by our parents we don't want our kids to suffer that same fate. And right. when we got this generation of entitlement. They have no sense of, I don't know. They're just so entitled. It's like I'm they glad don't. You said that. Can I take those words and add them to what Carmen said earlier? Sure. She said something about balance. Mm-hmm. She said something about balance. Right. Mm-hmm. She said, I, no, no, I'm sorry. Crystal said it. Not Carmen. Crystal said, balance in men man you said age of entitlement i'm glad you brought that up because i wanted to address that as far as men now you talk about balance who's going to teach them that balance though because i do notice that men don't have a lot of men don't have that ability they're either too light or too heavy like it's always like this it's never like you either got a a, a dude that's you know you could walk all over him but you really don't know what he's doing behind your back or you got a dude that's too heavy in the game and, and mad brody and you don't know what he's doing behind your back he he want to make sure you're not doing them behind his back. So like, who teaches them that balance? So like, what do we? That's and I, I can I, that's something that only a woman can provide. Only a woman can provide that balance to a man's life. Like that's something you have to speak into that man. Whoever, who, whoever, whoever no, the no, 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 that's no. a negative. Uh, so, yeah. so that's what we're disagreeing. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, 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 we will disagree right there because you know what? Like, I am. You know, I'm very big on communication and speaking. You know, things into my spouse or whatever, but you know what? Just like I'm a strong individual, so is the man I decided to love, right? Mm -hmm. And 
for the most part, he we we go to counseling. We we go to counseling, you know, just because we had a, a new child, a new addition to our home. Like right. I woke up when I realized I was pregnant and was like, we don't have enough. And we didn't have enough love, money, nothing. And I'm just like, we don't have enough. Like, I'm gonna focus on this child. What you gonna do? Mm-hmm. You know? Like, what you gonna do? And I don't know if you experienced that with your relationship, Mr. Wayne, but like having a child changed our dynamic completely. Right. And we ended up going to counseling for that because he felt like I left him out. Like he no longer existed. And I looked at him was like, I work, I have a small child, you, my husband, but you get the short end of the stick and I'm sorry. You know, (laughs) you know, it's true. It's true because we have a kid and we forget that we have a husband. Right. We forget to be a wife. It takes a long time to work that back in. But what I'm saying is I feel like he should have understood that. I feel like he should have understood this is a little child. She can't do anything for herself, especially in the baby stages. She can't do anything. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Who is going to do it? Like it's physical work doing this. So I feel like there should have been like this understanding veil I was provided, but I wasn't. I wasn't, he was over there, hurt feelings like, she don't love me. And I'm like, I cannot speak to you enough. I cannot look at you enough. I cannot sex you enough for you to understand that I am exhausted because I'm spread extremely thin. I have to hold down a job. I have to take care of this child and I have to take care of you. But who's going to take care of me? Mm. Who gonna do that? Who that? Who gonna do that if I'm preoccupied? So the thing is, no matter what, no matter what I say, no matter how much I talk to my spouse, like the men have their mindset. They're, they're set. They're set. Doctors, uh, physicians, you know, people of you know statue and power and credentials can't explain to a man why it's important to do this, that, or the third because men are set. They're right. set. We can, we can talk as much as we would like to. We can explain as much as we would like to. We can't teach them what they don't want to know. Like, it doesn't make them bad people, but it's just like, they're not really pliable. You know, you can't like, really re-raise them. So, yeah. yeah. Like, once they're men, they're men. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. it kind of has to be done early. Right. It right. has to be done early. Like, they have to have that example growing up to say, but you still can't form how they're going to think. They already got their right. own minds. Hey, right. came and said it best. You can't raise a man. Okay? Yeah, right. you can't. You cannot. Can so do y'all life? do y'all think we are raising um our sons to be the men that we don't that we do not or would not date? These I, men I, somebody is raising men that I wouldn't date. <laughs> um, I would <laughs> I would assume if I had a little boy that I would trust him with his father. That that's what I feel. I feel like I guess inevitably women when they raise men and they don't have any help from the father or like a male figure, then they possibly are dating men, uh, raising men that they wouldn't date. Yeah. Unintentionally. Like, I don't think they're going out to say, oh, you know, I'm going to make sure you are a trash man when you become older, you know, but it's just, they're just setting them up to, for a woman to provide for them. So they never know how to cut that off. Like, okay, son, I provided for you all this time, but now it's for you to provide for yourself. Mm-hmm. Not depend on a woman to provide for you. So which one of y'all and said that boys are coddled so much that they think women are supposed to cater to them with no reciprocation? Was that Carmen? Uh, that'd be me. <laughs> so I think that's where that thought of mine came from because I mean I, I am guilty because you know, you you during the process of raising kids, you you know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And at some time, and I ain't gonna lie, you know, my youngest son he's such a brat. And I do look at him and his girlfriend goes through this stuff. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, how do you put up with him? But I raised that madness, you know, right. lo- and, and I keep thinking in the back, but I just loved him. I just made sure he had. And, right. I, and I still really can't 100 percent pinpoint other than the fact that I raised him out of guilt because his dad wasn't around. But other than that, I really just can't pinpoint where the hell I went wrong with this you know what I mean I mean I can speak from just my personal experiences my mother because I'm the middle child Mm -hmm. right and my mother was extremely tough on me extremely but with my brothers it was you know they messed up it's like oh it's okay don't worry about it oh you tore this up Carmen get over here and do whatever oh my god I did my daughter like that she was so hard on me when it came to my education when it came to just another one of her sayings do the right thing because it's the right thing to do right Mm -hmm. but she never held my brothers to that like they would get away with bloody murder and that is why my youngest brother is just 
he out bad. Do you hear me? Like, I, I have no idea what's going to happen because he's just spoiled rotten. He has never had to like sacrifice for anything. Like out of all of us, my mother only paid for him to get through school. You see what I'm saying? So she's created a monster. I think and I'm not in our brains it. a little bit. We kind of feel like we're supposed to raise our daughters to be these strong black women. And I don't even, right. which is an unrealistic expectation because it wears you thin. Like Crystal just said, cause we are raised to, and built. This is my husband. This is my husband, Larry. Say, Hey, that's Hi. Crystal and Carmen, and you know, Wayne. No and, and then we kind of like let our boys off easy because they're, they're, they're young boys. They're going to go be strong and men and be men and, in theory, take care of themselves and be a husband, but we really make them weak as men. Right, and that's why I always And make it hard for women, like, well, I, I, I can't say your husband is weak, but I'm just saying make it hard for them to understand that my wife has a baby and she needs to be there for, you know what I'm saying? Not to say that's your husband, but that that's part of it. But listen, no, like it, it, this is a long line of things. Like I heard it even happens in lesbian relationships where it's two women. The one that didn't carry the child is left out somewhere feeling mad. Like it right. happens. <laughs> it's just the natural course of a new baby to the equation. But um, as far as like parents, I feel like we we have to mindfully try to raise them equally. Like you can't treat the boy differently from the girl. Like when you do, you see the difference. You have a whole lot of strong women and men that expect to be supported by them, you know? And mm. it's like, you, you gotta do them the same way. Right. And that's why I said, like, I guess let the men raise them because men are naturally going to be harder on their sons, you know? You think so? so? Like, you think my, so? My, my husband was raised by both his parents. Listen, my dad <laughs> tried to be hard on my brothers, but then my mom would come behind him. And that's the problem. And, that's and, and the cut problem. the legs from under him that's sometimes. The problem. So it's the mama's well, that, fault. No, I, yeah. I, I would say this. That's I think, it, I think okay. it takes, um, you can do a two parent, or even if you're a one parent, you really should treat your kids the same. When my mm -hmm. kids were young, I made sure they both, knew they did the same thing they it wasn't like oh you can do this but you can't do this now when they got a certain age things were age appropriate like right. for boys and girls uh i'm not i'm not I'm not a male chauvinist but girls are weaker in some ways when i say that physically uh like so when i, I looked at it like if you go out you know um you are physically not as strong as far as if somebody tries to attack you. I'm not saying most kids at that age are not, but girls are more of a target because the males are mostly, were usually mostly predators. At least that's what we thought male predators mm -hmm. on girls and stuff. So it was like, you know, you, you at certain ages, I kind of like watched what they can do and what they couldn't do. But as far as telling them not to, like I never told my boy, boy, you better go out there and get that. Boy, you better go out there and try to get that girl. Nah, I didn't, I didn't never did that. I said, Hey, you, you don't do that or you talk to people like this and you treat people like that. I, I treated them the same so that they could, uh, when he grew up, he knew how to respect the woman. It wasn't never a disrespect and his mother never, never let him disrespect women or, or, yeah, chase, or, his sister. or chase, right, or chase women. Even when he treated his sister a certain way, she got on him about, hey, that's yeah. your sister. That's your, you, you look out, y'all supposed to protect each other, y'all supposed to, you know, in the same way with, with him. And uh, and that's the way it was. But there were certain things I didn't let my 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 girl do at a certain age, what she wanted to, what she felt like, well, he's doing it, why can't? And that was probably in that age, going into that teenage. Which know, I thought it, was kind of unfair, even though I know some things are age appropriate and some, and you know he, you know, there's some things that girls can't do or shouldn't right. do because to a girl and a guy the same age at the party doing the same dance is not everybody going to walk away looking at them differently which is yeah yes. yeah i mean i get that but i still resent that like i do too still, i do too man him fuss about this all the time yeah, i hate that that's of that dynamic that it's okay for the man to do it yeah, and it's no. not okay for me to do it and well, he's not going to be looked at differently for that but mm -hmm, you're going like to be looked at differently from that and it's like it's more of those things where you kind of just have to say you know what? Neither one of y'all need to be doing that dance anyway, okay? Right. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. I agree. I agree with that. But there's, a, I mean, ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's, there's a reason for a lot of, uh, you know, they say men and women. I believe men and women. I think 
me and uh, uh what's what's your name? Wayne. Uh, Wayne. I'm sorry. Wayne. <laughs> me and Wayne actually kind of like got you know got. Yeah, into, Carmen. Carmen got a uh, feel a type of way about Wayne, right? So oh, be I'm careful sorry. what you say. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 there there's a thing that that women want to do i believe women can do anything that a man i not nobody can deny that a woman can't do um almost everything i'm gonna say it like that almost everything the, the thing is and the same thing with men we can't do everything a woman can do we, we just cannot do that you know what i'm saying so um but like there's a there's a position that y'all hold as a woman and that is uh in a civilized society. Who gave us that position? Okay, well, the position is <laughs> You're even to get it, honey. Okay, the position y'all hold is that y'all are, y'all, cause y'all like a gatekeeper. Y'all are the, in, in a mature society, women control the relationship. That's in any society. Y'all control uh, uh, a, civil, a civilized society. Women control the relationship. That's where, what's where, I read that somewhere. Where the women basically choose Women basically choose really like in in our in our society we choose who we want to marry men and women. It isn't that you uh-huh. are, you are, you know you wed you're married off anymore. That's not the situation. Uh-huh. It's a civilized society we choose what we want, and women choose and control most relationships. Usually that that's how it's supposed to be. Y'all con- y'all control the relationship, and there's a reason that because y'all you know women. I hear women say if a man go sleep with this many women. I should be able to do the same thing. And Correct. they really believe it. And you probably believe it, am I right? Absolutely. But do I you just, know I how like, do you know how hard like, a man has to go try and sleep with as many <laughs> women as you I mean as, as you can he do in one day? It's easier for women to sleep with that many men than it is for a man to sleep with that many women. It, it's, 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 it's it's almost okay. impossible oh, to I mean, do what you it, can do. You know what? I, I I know where he's coming from. There's tons of men that feel like you know, women just have it easily easier because they feel like men always gonna accept it, but the women not always gonna take it. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's always a, a, a flip side of that. Like there's some men that people just don't into that. You know, here you mm-hmm. go. You know, cause, <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 it depends. You know, some guys have it like that. But I mean, culturally, like women just, I feel like it might be easier for us to get it. You know, get more men, but we don't because it's frowned upon. Right. So. I mean, at the same time, I just feel like women just want the the right to do it if they want to without the label of being a hoe. That's right. what I was going to ask. Exactly. Gonna, my question my question was going to be, do you want to? Like, I mean, whenever I hear women say, you know, if I, what, if, what if I went out and, and slept with 20 girls in a week or 20 guys in a weekend? Do you want to? And then we get to the meeting. Hey, some, like, some, if some, I did, some, it should be okay. Want want to. To. Right. Okay. Right. Exactly. If, if she wanted to then because here's the thing boys from a young age and i mean i'm not the most religious person in the world but listen men can take on all these wives and and you know no one's telling them not to sow their royal oats before they freaking settle down but Mm, as women we were told by society that we have to remain pure and untouched and all of these different things like we can't even express ourselves sexually without someone thinking oh she was probably a hoe back in the day or Mm -hmm. something crazy like that like it's just complete and other foolishness and i am not subscribing to it i'm with carmen can i say something i was thinking the other day go ahead I remember, I remember when I was in college and um, there was a girl, I was really, I was really interested in this girl. And I was like, man, like, I think I might have to like hang it up for shorty. And I, hang I, it I up approached as, her. Like, okay, go ahead. Hang it up. Like, not yeah, hang it up. Hang the, let me put the jersey up for a minute. Uh, okay. And um, she said, you know, not for nothing, Wayne, you're a fun guy to be around. But that's my problem. Mm. You have way too much mileage on you, and that's not what I'm into right now. Mm. And and Her when friend. I heard that, that's what, and that was dope. When I heard that, it made me look at it different. Like so, so to your point, it's not even that. You know, guys can't do it without any recourse, because mm. yes, if you come across that woman who makes that the recourse. Then you're going to that you do suffer from that label, and that's I mean, that was just her making it right, you know, saying, "Look, 
if I got to be right, if I got to be pure when I get married, then I'm going to need my husband to. I felt like that for a long time Mm because I was raised religiously and Lord, I just knew like God, if I got to be a virgin, so does he. But (laughs) but if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, that is what you're 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 taught is for the boys and the girls to be mm-hmm. raised Both are supposed to be. Supposed to but be when the too. last time you seen a boy do that little silver ring ceremony thing okay <laughs> it's usually mad girls up there mm-hmm. you know what though can i say this can i say this as well though let i mean let's let's really be fair with one another right now i know you said you don't always like to be fair you said that earlier i'm not walking back i'm moonwalking not the same mad walk back um, <laughs> there we go okay. you, you know think? what's crazy carmen you would probably be one of my best female friends you nah. call me out on everything. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let me let me let me. I don't want to. Uh, I'm 29. Okay, okay, I, okay. Oh, okay. Um. So Wait, what was that? I didn't. Know. That was judgment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was judgment. It gives me a little. It gives me um a clearer a clearer picture on your perspective and why you're right. strong. Hey. That's all it is. It wasn't judgment. It gives me a clearer picture of why you're strong in the position that you're in. But um. I thought this to myself the other day and I was like, you know, sometimes I really wish I did not have all those extra bodies. I really wish like, because there was some that you just, there was some that you just did because like I'm bored. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And she's down. So let me just do it. And I didn't walk away from the situation feeling any more masculine or any more accomplished. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, half of them, I didn't even want to tell my friends. Like it wasn't even worth when I got caught, I was embarrassed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't anything. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. There was nothing charming about it. Mm-hmm. So, like, this. And I thought of the other. I was like, man, I wish I didn't have half of these on me. Like, and it, not that it matters now, but when I'm sitting alone, I'm. I go through, you know, whatever I'm thinking. And yeah. That was one of my thoughts. But I will say this: as far as today's world is concerned, if a if a if a guy approached a female and was like, listen. I'm a virgin and I would like to keep it that way until I got married. Today's, they and I'm talking about that, that 22, that 22 yeah. age, eight, let's go 18 to 22, 23, 24 and a half. They would laugh homeboy out the building. Mm. You want to be out No, virgin. because every pot got a top. I yes. said that earlier. And that means it's just about finding the yeah. person that. That that's going that's, that's picking up with yourself. Yeah, but I I, I agree with him though. That's I, true. I agree. But I think he would that. be laughed out the door until he find that top. Monroe agrees with me. <laughs> no, we're saying like I mean, we that's the issue I guess that we have as men and women. Like everybody is just speaking from their experience, and we have to accept that. Okay, yeah, I might be the woman that you know has to you know take it from her husband or you know there might be women out there that's running their men like it's like always so many different scenarios that people Mm -hmm. have to deal with so it's like it's really really hard for us to gauge the you know anything in particular because as soon as somebody says women are so confusing i'm like but men are equally confusing you know so it's like it's always depending on your experience so so it's really hard to just be like he got left at the room when there's a woman somewhere like but i was i I want that yeah I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Straight up. So I would say this. But I also, also like to point out. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, you cutting folks off again now, Wayne. Okay. No, 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 Wayne. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, wanted to, I needed to high step into the end zone real quick because Monroe <laughs> agreed with me. And then I was like this because this is where you are on my screen. <laughs> Proceed. <sighs> so I, I was going to say, so. We we all know we have our own, our own opinions of what should be. Uh, but what actually should be okay are we all do you do you operate from a position of like your your belief as a as a christian uh do you operate from your belief as uh just what you pick and choose to believe out of that i mean like okay, there, so there's a, I there's guess, a, script, I guess, there's a, I'm a sorry. prescription i guess i have it. to explain that because um i just had an episode about you know me as a christian so my christian faith is nothing probably like what you have grown accustomed to okay. i feel like what i personally believe is what, for me to be a christian is for me always trusting and believing in what god would have me to do and it might not look like the actual things that we read in the bible i feel like we can use that but i actually feel like in today's time we can write bibles you know, basically 
journaling our lives and what we had to trust God through. And there's so many things that are fearful to us that we wouldn't assume God would have us do because it's too new or it's never been done before, but we still have to do it because that's what the trust is. So I might be hard to um, pinpoint as a Christian, as far as if you're going to look at what it's been looking like, but as far as like me trusting God and believing in the God, I consider myself a Christian, right. but I'm probably unorthodox right. in many ways. Which I think a lot of people are. I think yeah. a lot of people are. I don't identify as a Christian at all. I mean, I believe God is a woman, so there's okay. that. But <laughs> well, this is, this explains <laughs> how how you how, you know the 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 way you think as far as you know because I'm a more right. of a tra- you know he's he's a traditional tra- traditional right mm-hmm. believing Christian you know and I'm not saying I don't do nothing wrong I ain't saying I'm not saying I'm not perfect but right you know. Um, when I bring it back home, when I bring it back to the, you know, to the core of what I believe, that's, right. that's where I'm mm-hmm. at. Now she's not, she, when well, she's. I'm, I'm not, not what? Gonna, a I'm Christian? Not say you're not a Christian. <laughs> what the uh, hell? You're not a, you're not a, uh, you're not as conservative. I'm not, cons- I'm a, she's I'm very, liberal. She, I'm liberal. She's very liberal. liberal life, right? okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't really hold all those stringent doctrines when it comes to certain things because I believe if a man can go outside with their shirt off, why can't I? I don't have a I have a problem with stuff like this. I just I'm right. not, but I'm, see, that's the funny thing about it. Like I feel like once we get to an area where we're like women can't do that, then you can't do it either. But exactly. Like, I feel like, but hold on, you can do that in Europe. If we, you really can. So uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like when men made up all these rules, they were just like. Should we be able to go outside with our shirts on? Yes. No, men yeah. made up they all can. these rules in an effort to control the dominant sex. Sex, yes. 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 Okay. What, what, what was that, yeah. Wayne? Oh, I oh, believe oh, oh, that okay. in everything <laughs> that I am. Oh, uh-oh. Can, can we talk to her? Can yeah, can we? No, that, that's, a, that's his daughter, I think. Oh, oh, daughter. oh, okay. Come here, Mackenzie, real quick. <laughs> hey, Mackenzie. Hi. Hi. We're talking to your dad. He's so smart. Mm-hmm. He said I was smart, but I don't. I don't know. That's true. I love you, man. I'll see you tomorrow. Aww. He's beautiful. So yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Now where's Jody? Uh, I think she's upstairs in the bed. Oh, now she went to the, to the tub to the bed. You try to keep yeah, her I'm from not, us. Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, we'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know I came. You know I came. I heard them just, just you know, playing offense all over you. You know, so I just said, you know what, just, just being over here being. He was down. He was downstairs. I, I have been very, very nice. This evening, okay, I have been you know, very, very nice. Here's the thing, Larry. She like, <laughs> like she just was not. She was not. She, she was wasn't not having it. it. No. I, I think if I was to come, if I this cool, I think if I was to come ahead like dumb ratchet, she's like that's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, no. If I had, if I had march six kids through here, all of them look mad different. Got a Chinese. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> she's like that's right. One mom. Very rude. <laughs> Very rude. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm capping, I'm capping. Listen, no, nah, but I don't mean that. But I, I mean, you, you, I, I do appreciate the interaction we be, that, that we were able to have because you guys did help me grow from last time. Like, my main focus off top, Wayne, do not interrupt. Try your hardest, not interrupt. Wait your turn. Hence the walk back. Because if I don't interrupt, I can't. Oh, that walk I like back to go. has been. I, because, no, because when you, when I, when I walk back, it's because there was something I wanted to say from something that you said prior. And mm-hmm. I can't, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, if I can't talk about it prior, like we passed it, I can't. And I, if it's a good point, I'm going to want to walk back. Also, I like to show that I'm paying attention, but I'm just saying. Well, but I think you've mansplained Paul yourself. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've mansplained yourself very well today. That's Carmen's word. She said he be mansplaining. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everything was, I think, I guess with experience, he'll maybe be a pro, you know? Yeah. Because he, he was a lot better because that first, that last episode, I was like, I just think his mic was just too loud. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I, I'm not going to lie. When y'all was coming with the comments, I was like, was I on that podcast? Because maybe I missed something because I, I guess because I was in it. 
in the conversation, I wasn't picking up some of the things that you all picked up out the conversation. You know, yeah, and I was just like, thing. where was I? Did I was I involved? Mm-hmm. So I, I was just like, Lord. And then he told me he was No, mad. I felt like you were being you were being a great like moderator moderator of the mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, you don't lose any cool points whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> so this is two yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's not, it's not. So I thank everybody. Thank you. So just some party. We've almost been two hours. I gotta go get me a glass of wine. So <laughs> So just in so how what do we walk away with this with this podcast? We gotta teach somebody something today. Which I wanna walk away with some parting words. And then tell well, us who you are, what what everybody can find you, things like that. Well, I guess to wrap everything up, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we all just have our perspectives and how we see things, how we view things. And in being the best person you can be, you just have to understand that. Some people aren't just, they're not going to see it your way. They're not going to see it for you. They're not going to get you. And that's fine too. Like I accept that just like, you know, traditional Christians and unorthodox Christians, you know, like I, I appreciate you and what you do. Like I was raised by men like you and I appreciate that. However, you know, I am who I am today because I feel like it's necessary, but I just want people to understand we don't have to see eye to eye, right. but we should be able to communicate and speak our opinion in a friendly environment like this mm-hmm. was. So yes. that's what I feel is most important because if we don't get to talk about it, we don't get to progress. Right. right. And so where can everybody and find you real quick? I am crystal clear from the crystal clear podcast. I can be found on Instagram, but you know what? If you just luck upon me, <laughs> which I did, <laughs> bless you. That's how I really like for it to happen organically. Cause you know, mm. I'm not big on promoting or pushing anything. I just like people to find me. And if they find something they like, great. Awesome. I did. All right, Carmen. Cool. And I'm Carmen Gray, the Shades of Gray podcast. Um, I try to be weekly. It just depends on what's on my heart and on my spirit. I also have a blog that I run and um, I'm trying to be more active on that. You can check that out at shadesofgraypod.com and that will link you to pretty much everything and then you know crystal and i come together for the reigning opinions podcast and that can be found pretty much everywhere i'm trying to get us on spotify keep your fingers crossed how do you um, do that i need help with that how do you get on spotify i'll shoot you an email girl (laughs) and um (laughs) and um you know we come together you know our nice blend of righteousness right and 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 ratchetness so you mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned earlier you work in the legal field. What do you do, Carmen? I am a paralegal okay. and law school prospect. Okay. Uh, you know, if this brain holds out for a couple more years, we'll see what happens. Mm. Yeah. Well, the hubby is a process server. I used to process serve too for a little extra cash. Interesting times. We'll have yeah. to swap war stories. Right. Look, we need, look, we need somebody in Dallas. You interested? Uh, <laughs> an email. <laughs> Go ahead, Wayne. What is your your parting words, and where can everybody find you? Balance is my parting word, and you can find me at Next Level Lifestyle on Instagram or W S Howard the Second on my Facebook page. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of, I, I, I fall in the vein of Crystal. Like, if you happen upon me and you see something with my face in it and you like it, holla at me. And thank all y'all. Carmen. <laughs> thank <laughs> you, Mr. Wayne. If y'all on Facebook, y'all check him out because he goes live a lot and it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Oh, OG. Where were you when I needed you, Larry? No. Nah. <laughs> Larry was asleep. He knew where to be. He was asleep. <laughs> But I thank y'all. I thank y'all very much for this. I thank y'all too. And I appreciate you ladies for coming, blessing my podcast with your presence. I'm a huge fan of both of you. And I look so much to future collaborations. Hopefully I get invited to the reigning opinions so I can shoot shoot it with y'all. And uh yeah, so I could come. I could come. (laughs) Crystal. Don't make me the authority. <laughs> you know what? Let me stop. Let me stop being petty. Let me stop being petty. We would love to have you on the Rain and Opinions podcast. 
I ain't trying to let y'all line me up, though. <laughs> like, well, well, you love gonna be on our stopping grounds if you come over there, so I mean... Yeah. We'll let you do what you want, and we'll just edit out what we don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> creation at its finest right there. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.